You will never guess what I should have known yesterday, but learned today. The largest army ever assembled is running through your veins right now. Hey guys, welcome back to Stuff I Should Have Known Yesterday. Today we're talking about viruses, what they are and how our bodies fight them off, and how vaccines work and how they're developed. But before we get to that, we need to first learn some virus basics. The first thing you need to know about viruses is that they are small. I mean, really small. So small you could fit billions of them on the tip of a pencil. They're essentially made up of little packets of DNA or RNA surrounded by a protein shell or fatty material called lipids. One of the most fascinating things about viruses is that they are pretty useless on their own. They can't do much of anything without the help of a host cell. That's why when viruses invade the body, their only goal is to wiggle their way into a healthy cell and trick it into making copies of itself. And that's it. That's really all they do. The problem is they can be really good at that one thing. The good news? The body has its own built-in army, specifically designed to combat harmful viruses and bacteria. They're called white blood cells, or immune cells, and their main job is to identify and destroy infections within the body. Cool! And this ain't no small army we're talking about. On average, you create 100 billion white blood cells every day. That's hundreds of thousands for every drop of blood in your body. There are several types of white blood cells, but today we're going to focus on three. Macrophages, B lymphocytes, and T lymphocytes. Macrophages are like the Pac-Man of white blood cells. They gobble up germs and dead or dying cells and leave behind antigens, or toxins, from the invading germs. Think of antigens as little germ fingerprints. The body identifies these antigens as harmful, and our B lymphocytes produce antibodies to attack them. T lymphocytes also attack cells that have been infected, but they have another very important job as well. After a virus attacks and is defeated, the body leaves behind a few T lymphocytes, known as memory cells, to keep an eye out for the virus's return. If it ever shows its filthy face again, the memory cells sound the alarm immediately and squash the attack before it can even get started, which is why you're usually immune to an illness once you've already had it. Which brings us to vaccines. A vaccine's goal is to simulate the battle between the body and a pathogen, and in the process produce antibodies and eventually memory cells. So when the bacteria or virus does invade the body for the first time, your immune system is already armed and ready. So how do you get a vaccine approved? Well, it's a long process that takes place in four to five stages. In the exploratory and preclinical stages, tons of research and development goes into identifying antigens and creating a vaccine candidate based on those profiles. In this stage, the vaccine isn't tested on humans, but it is tested on animals to see if it is safe and whether it induces an immune response. Once they have a promising candidate, they move on to phase one trials. A small group of human volunteers, usually less than 100, are given the vaccine to see if one, it is safe, and two, it induces an immune response. If they check both of those boxes, then it's time to move on to phase two. In phase two, the vaccine is given to hundreds of volunteers to determine optimal dosage and a vaccine schedule. If no harmful effects are discovered and it performs as it did in phase one, they move on to the next phase. In phase three, the vaccine is given to thousands of volunteers and it's in this stage that researchers discover just how effective the vaccine actually is, as well as uncover any side effects that weren't apparent in previous phases. Phase three is usually one of the longest phases, clocking in at between one and four years. If a vaccine candidate passes phase three, there's a very good chance it will be approved. However, if the vaccine proves to be harmful in any way throughout any of the other trials, Researchers will be forced to abandon the candidate in its current state and go back to the beginning. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Oh, if approved, there's usually a phase four trial that's conducted after the vaccine is released to continue monitoring its safety and efficacy. Bottom line, a successful vaccine will cost billions of dollars and could take years to develop. Even after it's released, we usually need to immunize 80 to 95% of the human population to achieve an effective herd immunity. That's basically when at least four out of five people who encounter the disease are immune, and thus do not pass it on, essentially slowing or even stopping its spread. So in review, 
Viruses are super small packets of DNA or RNA that invade healthy cells in order to replicate. White blood cells or immune cells work together to squash the virus's plans by creating antibodies and memory cells that both fight off the virus and protect the body from future infections. Vaccines simulate a battle in the body to train the immune system to identify and fight off infections without exposing the body to the ill effects of a disease. And vaccines can take years to develop and must successfully complete four to five stages before being approved for use. So why should you care? Because understanding how viruses work and how our bodies are equipped to fight them provides us a glimpse into just how incredibly resilient our bodies are. It takes some of the mystery out of illness, and in a time of uncertainty like this, it makes a bit of the unknown, known. Anyway, that's what I learned today. Hey, before you go, if you got something out of this video, I would encourage you to hit that like button. And while you're at it, you might as well subscribe as well, and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted. And as always, thanks for watching.